You're watching Fark Racing on OEN. Quality broadcasting by quality interns, including me. What, you thought I got paid for this shit? Fark Racing on OEN is brought to you by O&D Pharmaceuticals. Shut up about the side effects, take the damn pill, you'll be fine. And by Greaseburger, reminding you that hard liquor is now available at our drive-thru. Six drivers were injured in the running of the Epps Premium Synthetic Oil 200 at the New York Auto Ring last week. Billy Ray Smith Thompson, the truck winner at Albuquerque, will be out for the rest of the season. Megan Driver, the Columbia winner, after taking a vicious hit in her driver's side door, will likely never race again, let alone walk again. Points leader Laura Cyrus will miss this race and Buffalo Downs. We think she might be able to get back into her motor assault racing Isani at the Carl Superstore in Riverside, although she might not be 100% even then. Ashley Tucker, Nanami Mira, and Jessica Graham got off a little bit more lightly uh, we expect them to be back at Buffalo Downs. Tucker's husband, Tom Delgado, will be filling in for her in the uh, Bjorn Green 90 car this week, and Kurt Walker will be filling in for Mura in the 39. Laura Cyrus and Jessica Graham's cars were not entered in this race, and Jack Dempsey will be in the 40 for Accelerator Motorsports for the rest of the season. And of course, in the aftermath of New York, all the bleeding hearts were whining about how uh, super speedway racing is barbaric, it bunches up cars like sardines and kills people, and the unpredictability that uh, we seek in super speedways isn't necessary, as half these FARC races are decided by dumb luck anyway. However, I say to that, and I'm sure the FARC executives will agree with me, the cars are pretty safe, the tracks are pretty safe, what isn't safe is these drivers and their ability to hit the brake pedal when approaching a wreck. And that's really where we've seen a lot of these big hits take place, people just piling into wrecks like uh, drunken chimpanzees. But whining about super speedways just seems to be one of those facts of life, like death and taxes. And I'm sure there will be a lot of whining this weekend here at Lake Afton, as we've had some pretty heavy rain all week, but we're racing anyway. Kevin Monroe is on pole in the Blue Line Burger Star for M&J Racing with defending champion Joseph Howard on his outside. This is Monroe's fourth pole of the season. Uh, the only other driver in the, in the series this year with more than one pole is Jim Hayes, who has two. Monroe, who's been a very conservative driver in the past, is definitely going all out and qualifying this year as he leads the field down into turn number one under heavy braking in the rain. Jack Dempsey making a move for second on Libby Bell, and we've got chaos in the back. Jim Hayes, uh, who I just mentioned, gets turned around, and we've got a pile up. One car on, a, on its side, that's Dan Lecklider in the 10. Uh, Alex Witt and several other cars come piling in. This is going to put an end to the race for Dan Lecklider and Michael Madrigal, who you just saw embedded in the tires as well. Ryan Matthews, second in points, looking to take advantage of Laura Cyrus' absence. Did not qualify very well, and he just made a situation worse, sliding into Makoto Yamada and losing several more spots. Lap 2, AJ Young goes off the course, uh, trying to hold off Kelly Splicen as if he was ever going to accomplish that, and finds himself in the tires. Smoke coming out of that 15 car, he is done. Monroe maintains the lead, starting lap 4, Jack Dempsey giving chase. Dempsey into the back of Monroe, under heavy braking. Of course, uh, kind of difficult to do in the wet. So I'm not really going to fault Dempsey for aggressive driving, but Monroe hangs onto the lead and he gets around Derek Dunning pretty easily. Dunning holding up Dempsey. Libby Bell gets around Jack Dempsey for second place. Kurt Walker in the 39, uh, also going to get around Jack Dempsey. Dempsey having great difficulty finding a hole to get by the 68. As you probably noticed, the uh, track here at Lake Afton, not very wide, more suited for carts and motorcycles than 2,800-pound uh, stock cars. Alex Witt hard into the back of Aaron Singer in the one. Singer much less confident going into the corner than Alex Witt, and he gets run over. Monroe's being held up by a couple lap cars now. Caden Beckett in the racing car, and George Bryan in the 81 for the Doppelgang, and Libby Bell's gonna go right on by. Bell and Monroe both looking for a second win this season. Bob Steffens has gotten by Jack Dempsey for fourth, and he now catches Kurt Walker as Walker is held up by Caden Beckett and the smoking car of Aaron Singer. Bob Steffens will move into the third spot now. 
but uh, Jack Dempsey, he, uh, you probably just saw, is uh, charging forward once again. He gets back around Kurt Walker and now sets his sights on Bob Steffens. Jason Bates smashes into the one car of Aaron Singer as Singer is limping back around and not really able to pick a line. Makoto Yamada and Richard Scott pile in. Very poor visibility and uh, a very narrow course. Uh, really made that a lot worse. Ben Adkins and Cade Taylor also piling in. We've had quite a bit of chaos already and we're only five laps into this 18 lap sprint race as Mo Lester is going to get tagged by Ash Bridges. Both of them go into the tire wall and Mo Lester will be done for the day. Ash Bridges, the Australian, being about as big of a dick right now as Matt O'Reilly, who's whose name is plastered all over that O2 car at Stallman Racing. Ryan Matthews' car has not been handling well all weekend, and you saw the couple of skirmishes he was in at the beginning of the race, but uh, with cars dropping out left and right in these opening laps, uh, Ryan Matthews has gotten himself into position to make the feature. The battle for 13th ends badly for Kyle Gaffigan, as he gets tagged by Kerry Inns and takes a uh, nasty trip into that guardrail on the right side of the track. A lot more guardrails around here than there were back in 2009 when the series first ran here. And that race turned out much worse than today, despite being in the dry. But uh, we still got a whole weekend ahead of us. We'll have to see if that changes. In the meantime, Jack Dempsey, making his return to the Park Elite Series, continues to chase down Bob Steffens. And look at the straightaway speed that... Uh, his Lennard has over Bob Steffens' Sar going into turn one. Dempsey takes the third spot back, completing the pass going into turn one. The Australian has had one of the fastest cars all weekend. Ryan Barrett's been tiptoeing his way uh, around the track in the rain, but still manages to blow turn one completely and embed himself in the tire wall. Tanner Clayson breaks down on track. He will get uh, that car going again, but he'll lose a few laps. And here is Brian George in the doppelganger car, running around in 8th place. I'm pretty sure I saw him go a lap down earlier. Maybe I was seeing things. Um, good run for the doppelganger in their uh, first points race since last year. Brian George and George Bryan will be sharing that car uh, and sharing their points this year. Harry Asanola traverses the run up the hill much better than Bob Steffens, and he is rewarded with 4th place. I'm not very surprised to see Anola running up front in a race that has uh, claimed a lot of cars. Carrion smashes into the back of Caden Beck going into turn one, not realizing that Beckett has been one of the slowest cars on track. Kerry Ian's another one of the Australians in this field, and uh, a Rookie of the Year contender is currently running in 18th place, but I believe he'd have to pit for that damage and lose several spots. Harry Asanola breaks down on track and gets hit by Bob Steffens. And here comes George Bryan piling into the back of Enola. That's going to be the end of the race for George Bryan from 8th place. However, Enola would get going again. Uh, he'd lose a few laps as well. Uh, Caden Beckett gets turned into the, into the pit wall by Tanner Clayson, who just got back onto the track. And that's the both of them out of the race. And as we see Kevin Monroe hitting the pit lane with some front end damage, I'd like to point out that uh, several of these cars that are going out uh, late in the run are still in position to make the feature because of all the accidents we've had, such as this one where Joseph Howard turns uh, Henry Santos into the end of the pit wall. And Libby Bell, with no further competition, comes across the line to take her second win of the year, and she will become the first driver to win multiple races in 2014. Jack Dempsey, in his first start since 2012, comes home second in the number 40 Accelerator Motorsports car. That's got to lift their morale after Megan Driver's crash at New York last week. Kurt Walker coming home third, uh, lifting the morale at his own team, though uh, Nanami Mura will be back in that 39 car at Buffalo Downs. Kevin Monroe hangs on to fifth despite pitting in the last few laps. Uh, the top ten really got spread out at that point, so he didn't lose too much ground. Kelly Splicen grabs the high climber bonus and another top 10 for Accelerator Motorsports in this race. Taylor Brillen finishes uh, her second race this season. Uh, the first race she actually finished was a sprint race at Albuquerque. However, she's probably going to crash in the feature. Ash Bridges finishes 15th and puts his Stallman Racing car in the feature. And Joseph Howard, Caden Beckett, and Brian George will all make the feature after crashing out in the final laps although they will have to start in the back of the field. And on pole for sprint number two, race 20 of the championship, would be Tom Delgado filling in for his wife, Ashley Tucker, 
in the Big Bunny Barbecue Lenard for Bjorn Green Racing. And yet an another feel-good story this weekend. Delgado is going to get a big jump on Jeremy Baker, who will be in the uh, Fark Truck Race after this. Uh, J Jeremy Baker competing for the championship in that series, although uh, all the drivers in the championship hunt in that series have not been very fast. Well, aside from Jeremy Baker, who's shown some flashes of brilliance as he gets turned around in turn one. I saw that coming a mile away. Chaos in turn one in the rain. Baker and Leslie Riggs, the all-star winner, being turned around in front of the field, although uh, not too much damage done uh, compared to the last race. Although it's going to be quite the scramble getting away from this one. Rip Tyler, the 2012 champion, stuck on the left side of three wide, hits the guardrail, loses to the back end of the car, and spins around. And we got more trouble. Uh, J.W. Lester and Aoi Mizushima, uh, they get together, and that takes uh, Tyler off the course once again. Kenny Brillin in the 20, also around. Rachel Rainsford loses the back end of her car, and she goes around as well. Never mind what I said about not, ha not having as much chaos as the last race, it's just a bit more evenly spread. Around the track, Jared Pierce plunges into the end of the pit wall, and that's a very big hit for uh, Jared Pierce and Jeremy Baker. Tom Brayton is going to lose his brakes in the uh, racing team car. Not surprising that they had a failure like that. Those brakes probably cost like $3, and there's smoke coming out of the back of the 86 of Ryan Griffin now. Griffin was running in sixth at the end of lap number three. It was a good start to the race for him, but now it comes to an end. As was the case in sprint number one, the attrition rate pretty high in these opening laps. Cletus McGuffey getting roughed up by Isaac Leitner a bit. Uh, I think that may have cut down McGuffey's uh, left, right front tire as he just went straight off the road and into the tire wall. I'm sure Tom Delgado doesn't mind all the calamity happening behind him as he's pulled out to a pretty comfortable lead. However, he's got Lucas Sweeney behind him, and Sweeney has established himself as one of the better rain racers in the series. He got a win at Watkins Glen a few years back in the wet. Sweeney's last win in the Fark Elite Series came at Talladega in 2011, but Tom Delgado's last win came at Daytona in 2008. So a couple hungry drivers up front. Leslie Riggs now up in smoke. Uh, Andre Kinasa trying to figure out a way behind her, and... Uh, Leslie Riggs gets a uh, nice welcome from her sister, Allie. And with Leslie Riggs out, it looks like uh, Kevin Monroe and Taylor Brillen are going to be M&J's only representatives in the feature. Allie Riggs had a pit to get that damage repaired. She was running in fifth place, and now she gets a uh, rude bump from J.W. Lester going into turn one, and she wrecks the front end of that car once again. However, later on in the lap, J.W. Lester is going to break down on track, and Allie Riggs runs into the back of him. I do hope that wasn't a revenge mission on Allie Riggs' part, as that's going to finally do her car in. Whereas J.W. Lester would get back onto the track a few laps later. Reed Bullet currently runs third, managing very well in the rain. He is also the Rookie of the Year leader, uh, which makes this one of the most impressive turnarounds I've ever seen out of a driver. Last year he was wrecking all over the place, he was slow, and he was just a general nuisance. But now it looks like he might be able to reach the level of his Sergio Power teammates as he's contending for top 10s uh, almost every week. Running in fourth place is Radimir Stanichev in the 82 for Rus Autosport. This team comes from a road racing background, so they know how to set up a car for the rain, and it's working out well for Stanichev. In the meantime, Lucas Sweeney is chasing down Tom Delgado for the race lead. Neither of these guys have won a park race in a while, but the question is, who's hungrier? I know I am, looking at the uh, Greaseburger and Big Bunny uh, decals on those cars. Aoi Mizushima blows up in the 264 for Messina Motorsports. That's the only noteworthy thing she's done today. Nick Asher gets turned into the wall coming into the final corner by Kenny Brillen. He tries to make a move for the pit lane. Caitlin Richler is in his path, and Asher plunges into the end of the pit wall. Jared Pierce did the same thing at the end of lap one, but even with this poor visibility, I'm not sure how you don't see that wall. John Hawks appears to think that Laura Ocean is holding him up, so he turns her off the road, heading up the hill and into the wall. That ends the day for Laura Ocean, who got her first win at New York last week. Lucas Sweeney making a dive for the lead, but he has to check up, otherwise he'd slide right into the side of Tom Delgado. Delgado's got his hands full right now, trying to uh, deal with this poor traction, holding off Lucas Sweeney, and negotiating with all these lapped cars. 
Sweeney is right on Delgado's heels as we approach four laps to go. Le Gruel and the Imago Inglesby for the Herzog Racing Team is going to get together with Kenny Brillen and go hard into the wall. Gruel, the Canadian, was running in 13th place. Coming around the final corner, Tom Delgado will see the white flag. Lucas Sweeney continues to give chase, but Delgado has opened that gap ever so slightly over the past few laps. Tom Delgado has made himself very well known in uh, many different circles of stock car racing around the world. He won a FARC race at Daytona in 2008, he's won a couple Team Master Cup Series races, and he's won in Dash Cup and the ASCC. And today, filling in for Ashley Tucker, Tom Delgado will hold off Lucas Sweeney and take his first FARC Elite Series victory since 2008. This will certainly be a very popular win for the American Devil, and as for Ashley Tucker, I think she'll either be very proud, or she'll feel like a massive idiot watching Delgado take only one race to give that car its best performance of the year. Anyway, Reed Bullet continues his impressive turnaround, bringing home third place. Andre Kinasa fourth in the Groves car. Radmir Stanishev uh, was knocked back to fifth place by Kinasa. The hotshot racing teammates Kelly Posadas and Trey Ashby come home seventh and eighth. Ashby making his first run of the season. A uh, very good result for him. And Kelly Posadas grabs the high climber bonus after starting in 26th. Zach Webster in 11th was the last car on the lead lap. And J.W. Lester, who broke down on track earlier in the race, comes home 20th, two laps down. After the mayhem that the rain brought, the Afton 120K feature race would be greeted with a clear sky and a dry track. Kevin Monroe would take the Marlisle pole once again, and Jack Dempsey uh, started on his outside, continuing his impressive weekend. But Monroe's gonna jump out all by himself at the line. Tom Delgado and Jim Hayes uh, get by the 40 as well. Not a great start for Jack Dempsey heading into turn number one. Monroe hard on the brakes, and it's going to be all clean through turn one, but not much longer than that. Caitlin Richler gets loose, tags the wall, and she goes around, uh, collecting Jamie Flock in the 95 and Trey Ashby in the 12. Richler started in 24th, but she's fallen backwards on the first lap. Kevin Monroe gets it very wrong on the run up the hill. He runs wide and Tom Delgado is all over him. Monroe sweeps across the 90s bumper, almost taking him out, but Delgado quickly sneaks by and takes over the lead. Halfway through the first lap, Jack Dempsey now all over the 63. Dempsey finally getting up to speed. Henry Santos trying to get by Tanner Clayson as Clayson uh, has a handful with that 79 car and Clayson turns Santos into the guardrail. Working lap two of 43, Santos is another driver to have problems early on. Bob Steffens gets into the back of Zachary Zins heading into turn one and uh, just kisses that tire wall. And Ryan Matthews is going to get uh, run over as J.W. Lester hits the back of uh, Caden Beckett and that puts Matthews in the wall and out of the race. Matthews needed this opportunity to get some points, and it's all going to go down the drain as you saw Reed Bullet get into the, into the back of Kelly Posadas and send her for a ride. I know Reed Bullet's been generally very impressive, but I can't help but feel skeptical when he continues to make mistakes. Rachel Rainsford is turned into the pit wall by Bixby Foot, and that's a violent crash as Zach Webster and Harry Asinola are also collected. Rachel Rainsford and Bixby Foot going upside down. However, they would uh, quickly be released from the Infield Care Center, which is a relief to see after the events of last week. Uh, Jack Dempsey now making a run for the lead on Tom Delgado, coming to the end of lap number five. Although uh, Tom Delgado right now has a bit more straight line speed than the 40 car. Dempsey seems to have lost a bit of straight line speed from yesterday, but although he's definitely got the cornering speed to make up for it. Joseph Howard started in the back of the field after wrecking out in the sprints, but at the beginning of lap six, he's up to 14th place, and I, I believe he's challenging Scott Dollitz for 13th, but Henry Santos gets into the 17. I think that was payback for the uh, sprint race yesterday. Joseph Howard is now going to have a lot more work than he'd like ahead of him. That 17 car is pretty heavily damaged. He's going to bring it into the pit lane and lose a lap. Howard was one of the fastest cars on the track before that. Jack Dempsey trying again, making a bid for the lead on Tom Delgado, and this time he will clear the 90. Delgado had a miserable couple of corners, and Dempsey takes advantage. Dempsey, after the 2012 season, 
had plans for 2013, but the funding never materialized. Radomir Stanichev gets into a skirmish with Kelly Posadas and Lucas Sweeney, and that's going to take the 82 car out of the race. Stanichev and Sweeney were battling for position. This is going to set Sweeney back as well. Ash Bridges gets uh, uh, turned off the road by John Hawks. Bridges then hits the wall, comes flying back up into Kiki Hitsuno. Hitsuno launches that four car into the air. Earl McDermott nowhere to go but into the side of the four. Duckroll, I believe, got some good information out of those uh, rain tires that were ran yesterday uh, by McDermott, who finished in 10th in a sprint. As uh, Rick Tyler in the 24 now blows up, more problems for Sergio Power Incorporated. Jack Dempsey has opened up his lead over Tom Delgado, but the engine goes on the 40. A huge disappointment for Dempsey and Accelerator Motorsports. They finished second in their sprint, and they were set to walk away with this race. But the strain of two days of racing is going to be too much for that engine. In the meantime, this is now the battle for the lead. Tom Delgado and Jason Bates. The Smash Beer Lenard team did a pretty good job at repairing that two car after uh, Bates got into that skirmish in his sprint. Riding on board, Jim Hayes as he runs into the back of the crippled Jack Dempsey car. Jim Hayes was running in fifth place and this is going to set him back. He ran straight into Jack Dempsey and it's not like he's got uh, poor visibility to use as an excuse today. Caden Beckett gets loose, tags Jamie Flock and smashes into the guardrail. That's the only noteworthy thing he's done today. Tom Delgado gets caught up with the lapped car of Scott Dalitz running around with a bit of damage after that wreck with uh, Joseph Howard, and Jason Bates takes advantage and takes over the lead. Running in fourth place at the moment is Brazilian rookie Gabriel Messina. Messina came under fire for his uh, less than clean performance at New York last week. However, he's been doing a much better job today. Uh, Brian George in the um, 81 for the doppelgang is up in smoke on lap 16. He was scored in sixth place last time by. Kevin Monroe hits the pit lane, but it's quite early for routine pit stops, and um, that's probably why he came into the pits. He had a problem of some kind, and the engine let go after he came out of the pits. He's now sitting in the middle of uh, the exit of the final corner. He holds up the leaders, but Jason Bates uh, sees the 63 sitting in the middle of the track, and uh, quickly scoots by, and this will open up his lead over Tom Delgado. Working lap 20 right now, just a few laps from halfway, and Jason Bates seems to have a very good car under him. This is the best run of the season that he's had so far. Jim Hayes' engine lets go. He had fallen back to 14th place after smashing into Jack Dempsey, and now his day comes to an end. Jason Bates hits the pit lane at the end of lap 23, and Tom Delgado is going to follow him in. However, the Bjorn Green 90 crew has a much faster stop than, than the two, and Delgado beats Jason Bates out of the pit lane. And Delgado will retake the race lead. These are the only stops that the leaders are planning for this whole race, so now Delgado is sitting in a very good position to uh, become the first driver to win two races in one weekend. Reed Bullet up in smoke from 12th place. His day is done. He's done respectably so far today, other than that skirmish with Kelly Posadas. Jason Bates, slow on the track, and he's going to bring that two car to his stop on the right side of the front stretch. Bates' race comes to an end after he broke away from the field with Tom Delgado. Jason Bates has had more than his fair share of uh, possible wins that have slipped away through his whole career, but this is going to put Gabriel Messina in second place. However, he's running about 15 seconds behind Tom Delgado. Taylor Brillin, shockingly enough, is still in the race, and she's third. Although I'm sure that the number nine team is uh, very nervous. Um, I was referring to the uh, possibility of an engine failure, but uh, if Brillin's gonna be throwing her car off the course, they've got a reason to be nervous about that too. Lucas Sweeney running six, gets into the back of Trey Ashby. Ashby breaks the guardrail, flies over the wall. Joseph Howard gets caught up in it. Tanner Clayson, nowhere to go as well. Another vicious crash is going to take out Trey Ashby, Lucas Sweeney, Tanner Clayson, and Joseph Howard. 
Fortunately, there's uh, not much medical concern with any of the drivers involved, and even more fortunately, uh, there wasn't anyone behind that wall that Trey Ashby flew over. As we see uh, Alex Witt uh, struggling with the handling of that 05 car and uh, playing with the wall. Tom Delgado continues to lead by a staggering margin over Gabriel Messina. The gap is about 15 seconds. So uh, Delgado not facing much pressure right now with under 15 laps to go. Uh, Gabriel Messina continues to run second, Taylor Brill in third, and Tammy Barnton is running fourth, the last car on the lead lap. We've seen a lot of this kind of thing happening this season where uh, as the race goes on, the dropout rate really thins out the number of cars on the lead lap. Here you see Gabriel Messina in second place running behind a group of lap cars and Kurt Walker uh, takes Scott Dalitz into the wall. I'm sure that gave Messina a bit of a scare and Dalitz is going to drop out of the race from 16th. Tom Delgado keeps extending his lead as the laps wind down. His lead is now about 22 seconds over Gabriel Messina but going into turn one he runs into the back of the slower car of Kenny Brillen. Brillen running about three laps down uh, and that's quite a bit of front end damage on the 90 car. And the 90 crew is telling Tom Delgado that they cannot ignore that damage and they're calling him into the pit lane. Coming to five laps to go, Tom Delgado has to get that front end repaired and he's got to be furious, but uh, he pretty much brought that on himself. He ran right into the back of Kenny Brillen and in most cases, you are responsible for the car in front of you. The green car going by right now is Gabriel Messina. That's for the race lead. Tom Delgado now coming out of the pit lane, and he's going to be about six seconds behind the 238. Tom Delgado is going to go from the ecstasy of winning yesterday to the agony of letting today's race slip away. But he's uh, still second. Taylor Brillen is quite a ways back. She is not a factor for Tom Delgado. But in these final few laps, Delgado is driving angry posting uh, faster lap times than the race leader, Gabriel Messina, but he is much too far behind uh, unless a catastrophe happens for Messina. But that's racing, where dumb luck and uh, tiny mistakes can destroy your day. But Delgado's loss is going to turn into Gabriel Messina's gain as Messina sails down the front stretch with no competition to take his first Fark Elite Series victory. Messina kept it clean all day and took advantage wherever he could. Delgado, after leading the most laps, has to settle for second place after a, a very crucial mistake. Taylor Brillen uh, survives the rest of the way to come home third. Tammy Barnton caps a very good weekend with a fourth place. She's needed a run like this. Zachary Zinn's fifth. Sprint winner Libby Bell finishes sixth. And she's definitely going to make some huge gains in the championship after that. With Delgado making that late pit stop, several cars got back on the lead lap. Kurt Walker was the first car one lap down, and 16 cars finished the race overall. Kenny Brillen, the last one running, four laps down. And here are the point standings leaving Lake Afton. Laura Cyrus still leads despite missing this race, but Lady Bell has pulled within 30 points of her, uh, knocking Ryan Matthews back to third. After New York, the gap between 1st and 20th was 247 points, now it's 184. And uh, with Cyrus missing Buffalo Downs as well, um, the top 20 could close up even more. It's unfortunate that the uh, championship is going to be shaken up under these circumstances, but it is what it is. Tammy Barnton jumps back up into the top 10 with her uh, great run this weekend. Kevin Monroe, Gabriel Messina, and John Hawks now find themselves in the top 20. Now let's have a look at the Rookie of the Year battle where Reed Bullitt continues to lead. Tammy Barnton, the Rookie Shootout and Smash Beer 500 winner, made some huge gains in this battle as well, jumping to 5th from 12th. Robert Nelson fell back a spot from 10th to 11th, and Gabriel Messina, with his win, jumps all the way to 7th. 